Shalom, family. This is Brother Daryl, and welcome to our first episode of False Doctrine Exposed. Today, we'll be debunking the unbiblical claim that Joseph is the father of Christ. These alphabet camps are completely out of control in this hour, and they're engaging in mental gymnastics in an attempt to twist the scriptures. So let's unravel them. Firstly, understand that according to Torah, a man's seed is unclean. Let's get into it. Leviticus chapter 15 verses 16 through 18. And if any man's seed of copulation go out from him, then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean until the even. And every garment and every skin whereupon is the seed of copulation shall be washed with water and be unclean until the even. The woman also with whom man shall lie with seed of copulation, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the even. Christ was completely without blemish or corruption according to the epistles. How then could he have been born of the unclean seed of Joseph? 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 17 through 23 And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God, seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. We have all been reborn of the incorruptible seed, which is the word of God. And we all know that Yahshua is the word made flesh. How could he be the incorruptible word of God if he were born of Joseph's corrupted loins? That's a contradictory assertion, family. Let's drop a really important precept. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So in other words, as it is written is how it should be received. This is the most notable prophecy regarding the birth of Christ. And that's in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son and his name shall be called Emmanuel. No private interpretation needed or allowed according to the scriptures. A virgin would conceive, and that would be the sign of the coming of the Messiah. The meaning of Emmanuel is God, or El, is with us. That's what that name means. All names in the scriptures have a meaning. Emmanuel means that God is with us. And that's very important, because that's exactly what the gospel accounts declare, and it perfectly mirrors this prophecy. So let's go right into the gospel accounts that mark the coming of the Messiah. Matthew chapter 1 verses 18 through 25. Now the birth of Yahshua HaMashiach was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. 
Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of Yah appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of Yahweh by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is, God or El is with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of Yahweh had bidden him, and he took unto him his wife, and knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Yahshua. This is abundantly clear. What, what's so unclear about this? Moving forward, let's go straight into the account from Luke. Luke. Chapter 1, verses 26 through 35. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin, to a virgin, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. Yahweh is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Yahshua. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Adonai Elohim or Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. There's nothing complicated here. Nowhere in the scriptures does it say that Joseph lay with his wife and conceived Yahshua. Anyone teaching you that is literally adding to the scriptures. Knock it off, guys. Let's move forward. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. And the Adonai Elohim or Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living soul. Adam was born of the Holy Spirit, the breath of God. If you can understand that Adam was nothing more than dust, who is animated by the power of the Holy Spirit, then you won't be confused at the idea that Christ was born solely of the Holy Spirit and implanted into Mary's womb as well. It's not complicated. If you can accept that the Most High formed a man from the dust and breathed the Holy Spirit into him, then the birth of Yahshua would not be a mystery to you. It follows. It's one plus one equals two, guys. And in fact, Paul literally called Yahshua, Christ, the last Adam. He did so for a reason, because in the same way that Adam was the son of God, so was Yahshua. To argue that Joseph is the father of Christ demonstrates not only a lack of basic reading comprehension, but also a lack of prophetic understanding. 
anyone teaching this doctrine is still a milk drinker and you should not be studying under them. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 1 But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Adonai that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Punishment is coming to the false teachers that spread lies. Count on it. Look at what happened to Eddie Long. That's just the beginning, I assure you. The so-called elders that are teaching these wild doctrines lack understanding. Flee these alphabet camps and get into the word for yourself. And if you look beneath the surface, you'll find that these camps are not what they appear to be. Teaching that Joseph was the father of Christ is an obvious attempt to detract from his divinity. You need to ask yourself why this is being pushed. Kind of sounds like something a Muslim would teach, huh? Hmm. As always, thanks for your time, family. All praise to the Most High and great glory to Yahshua HaMashiach, the only begotten Son of God. I'll see you next video. Shalom.